absolutely destroyed. Oh, I just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Brett Wheeler here, the diabetic cyclist. As you can see from the title, I did a race yesterday. It was pretty damn hard, as you saw from the intro. So today, I'm literally out for a really steady ride because yesterday was pretty brutal. So I'm literally out for an hour, zone one. Keep the heart rate low. Just enjoy this beautiful Portuguese Algarve weather. You know how we like it. So the race started pretty early yesterday and I'm gonna clip in now uh, from when I started yesterday, which is very early, waking up at 4 a.m. So let's go back to yesterday's Brett. So it's five o'clock a.m. Let's get in the car and head on up there. Yo. Today I am racing a Grand Fondo in Torres Vedras. I've done it over the past couple of years. The place is amazing. Um, roads are good. The organization, they do a great job. Um, so I'm just gonna go get signed on. So I'm here for the Pro Tool team. Uh, get signed on and uh, we'll have a little chat in a minute. Let's go. <laughs> Obrigado. Obrigado. We've got all signed in. Uh, just on the finish straight, just on the, uh, checking it out. I always remember there's a couple of speed bumps coming down this, so one there, but that's after the finish. There's the finish. Some little gander, see what's going on. And at the end is the roundabout that I went to go around last year where you didn't actually have to and uh, came forth. So, so we're sprinting down there absolutely flat out. We're going to go back to the car. We have a little gander what you get in these goodie bags. But by the feels of it, they give us a bottle of wine, which is interesting. But, you know, it's all good. Back at the car, got the bike out. Let's have a little look. What we get in these goodie bags. As you can see, <laughs> in Portugal, eh? get some wine. Lovely. Energy bar, be handy. My number plate and stuff's in there. Uh, some socks. And some voucher. And then a nice little bag. So we get the number plate on the bike, get it sorted out, get my kit on, because we actually start in 50 minutes. So I have to go get warmed up. Just a little pedal around, have a look at the finish. So just out for a little 10 minute spin. We start in 20 minutes. So just having a look at the last kilometre is up this climb. It's always decisive. 700 metres of climbing and it flattens out. So coming into the roundabout back there, it'll be in a good position. After this, go have a look at the actual finish corner. See how it is. Woo! Woo! At the end of the race, this will be a bit cheeky, but I have less bottles on me. Look at this day. Absolutely stunning. 15 degrees, highs of 21. Low wind. Have a look. Now at the top of that little climb, like I said, 700 meters. It flattens right off. Being in a good position will help massively. That's my plan, just be with the guys. If not, if there's a breakaway, and just smash it, really. Get down to the start. And I'll let you see how chaotic it is. And then, uh, speak to you in a bit. Here we are in box one. Number 87. It's, uh, a lot of people back there, so luckily I'm at the front of the race. Not too many people. We start in 10 minutes. So I'll see you on the other side. I also can't see while we're riding. Um, yeah, so going to give Eddie, hope you guys are doing good, they're dropping a little bit, but quite high in a minute, so see you on the other side. Absolutely destroyed. Oh. Oh, just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, left the house at 5am to drive up to Torres Vedras. 
It's a great race. They do Grand Fondos every year. And I've done it two years before, racing for the Pro 2 cycling team. First 60 kilometers is more or less quite flat. I think you go up and down maybe two, 300 meters. But it's a fast course. I think the first hour we are averaging 42 kilometers an hour. And then the big group stayed together. I think there's literally about 100 of us in the front group. Then we got to a climb that was at about 60 kilometers which was going to be one of the most vital points of the race. And I knew I had to be near the front. But for the whole entrance into this climb, I was probably 40th in the group, maybe a little bit back. And I just couldn't get closer to the front, no matter what I tried. Because I think the way the race was so fast, it was so tricky to make a way to the front, um, unless you were in the very front blob. So when we got to this climb, I must have entered it in about 40th. Pushed hard and pushed as hard as I could to close up to the boys in front. And I crossed the top of the climb. I caught up to 24th and I could see the group, you know, descending the mountain. So I just give an absolute hammer. Caught that group. And in this little blob, there was, I think 15 of us. And there was still eight up the road, which it was gonna be very, very hard to catch after losing them on that descent. So we all stuck together. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, there was that specific part that I thought was gonna be quite critical. You know, I was planning, obviously to try and win my race in that part. I made my move on this group of 13 of us. And then at the top of that little climb, energy I had left. Luckily, a few kilometers back, I still had a couple of gel. So I took a gel and that might have helped just put the hammer down and cross the line in sixth place in my category and ninth overall so ninth out of 550 sixth out of 150 something so very happy it's just i obviously messed up with my entrance into that climb when i got to the top of that climb i was two minutes behind first place and when i got across the finish line i was one minute 12. so i caught up quite a bit of time over the last 40k but obviously the damage had been done so i just worked my ass off to get there so i'm also really happy how my diabetes was i always kept it a bit high because i knew it was going to be a hard fast race and very hard to eat and drink on the ride so i think i was always in about the 200s you know i was eating gels every 20 30 minutes drinking and yeah it was it was good you know it's tough for us diabetic cyclists we're not only worrying about the energy we're using if our sugars go low you know it's it's worse than most bonk so and I have to say that was probably one of the hardest races I've done. The normalized power was 327. I'll put in the, the statistics now. The normalized power was 327. The average speed, 38 kilometers an hour. It was just nonstop, but it was a good race. Like I say, I very much enjoyed it. Now, I went there for winning, but you know, you can't win them all. Road cycling, you can be the fittest, fastest, all that sort of stuff. But I'm just going to finish off this lovely gentle ride it's beautiful weather so i can't thank this team enough pro chill came out with the entries all that sort of stuff two cycling for the amazing bike beautiful and louis my coach you know he's given me some good info and obviously my wife biggest sponsor of all she lets me do it all so yeah thanks for watching guys diabetic cyclist laters